Hi everybody and welcome to Freakin' Jeep. We're going to work on some ball joints. I know a lot of you people have uh, asked about them in the Jeep groups and yeah, they're not fun, but uh, you can come along and watch, watch what I'm doing. Um, I'm kind of at the point where if you know how to change your brakes, um, which if you're working on ball joints you probably already know how to do your own brakes, so that's kind of where I'm at. I Remove the brake pads, um, you know, the calipers, the hangers, pads, rotor. Um, yeah, and that's, uh, ju that's just the start. Now we can pull the wheel bearing and the axle shaft out, and then we'll knock the spindle off, and we'll work on these ball joints. Hopefully they're not just too bad. As you can see right now, the rotor is gone. The hanger for the caliper is gone. That's hanging right here, just out of view. If you know how to change wheel bearings, you should know. You, you know where I'm going from here. But we got to pull these wheel bearings off, and uh, uh, probably not going to be fun. Now I know you see me using air tools. I I like to cheat. That's my thing. I got access to a pal shop. Use it whenever I want. Um, just happen to be working on the ground. Normally I'm working in the air, as you can see in in the other videos. But uh, as usual, I like to tell you kind of what uh, what's going on. This is a 13 millimeter 12 point socket. That's what these bolts are. They got a 12 point head on them. I use impact sockets, so those chrome sockets just don't hold up. Even if you're putting a breaker bar on them, you can plant, you got a, about a 50 50 chance of busting one of them chrome sockets. So go on to Amazon, whatever. Uh, this is a, I think it was a Tektron or something like that. Tekton. I paid. Uh, eight bucks for it maybe but it's 12 point 13 millimeter don't waste your time with them chrome ones and yes you can do this job with all hand tools I just prefer the air You may have to turn the steering wheel a little bit to get enough clearance to get in behind here. It's a whole lot easier if you turn the steering wheel, whether you got a ratchet or a breaker bar or cheating like me and using uh, impact wrenches. Now on the axle side, there's a nut on the front, there's a cotter key you have to pull out. Mine didn't look so good, barely came out, luckily it didn't break. Then they got this little castle lock, you know, it's got a bunch of little teeth on there, I don't know if you can see that, yep. And a little waiver spring washer that just holds it tight so that the cotter key doesn't move around. Here in Wisconsin, they started using some new salt, liquid salt, sticks to everything, rust everything out. So I had to pry that one off. But the axle nut on here, I've got a 36 millimeter socket.
You know, if you have, and if, if, if anybody has questions on what I did, feel free to leave a comment down below. Don't forget to uh, subscribe, hit like, you know, you're welcome to share it with your friends, family, for, for sure, for, uh, share it with, uh, with our fellow Jeepers. I, I don't have big money. I don't make money off of this. This is all entertainment for me and for you and uh, Hopefully it helps you guys out Otherwise I'm wasting my time <laughs> It's all right No, I'm working on an old one Grand Cherokee, which uh, which is mine, the one with the big lift on it, or the four-inch lift on it, and long arms. You see, probably already seen those videos, otherwise you probably wouldn't be following me. But uh, it, is, it doesn't matter. It's the same on a ZJ. It's the same on an XJ, a Wrangler. They all got these wheel bearings. They all got axle nuts to pop off. So, sometimes they can be a real bugger if you've never had them off before or if it's been a long time. They, uh, they tend to rust in place then, uh, Then you gotta get a chisel in between there. Beat with a chisel and big hammer. Just noticed. Don't know if you can hear that. Should be able to. Apparently that wheel bearing shot. That's not good. I didn't know it was bad. Good thing I got a used one laying around because I think that's gonna be getting put on. Turn the spindle straight, of course, or the steering wheel. That way you can pull the axle shaft out without tearing the boot. How about that? As you can see, now I got that all out. You can see how rusty that is. I can't remember. I think I've had this wheel bearing off once, but that was probably like 80,000 miles ago. You can see that's the hole where the axle go, axle shaft goes in. Yeah. You know, at this point, I'm going to take a little side trip here and uh, we'll talk about axles. I've seen a lot of times on the uh, on the forum or not on the forum but on our Facebook pages there has been a lot of questions about axles. Difference between a select track axle, quadra track axle, quadra drive axle. Well, the difference is select track and quadra track have the same axle shafts. The only difference comes in is with the quadra drive, and that's because on the quadra drive the the carrier is different. The hole inside the Verilock system is a little wider inside the differential carrier, which makes the axle shafts a little bit shorter and uh, 
if you go try putting a quadra drive in your select track or quadra track it's going to uh, not reach the splines not not going to work so uh, make sure you know what you got now this one this Jeep has got a quadra drive so it's got the shorter axles quadra track select track longer and back to this When we're going to knock spindle loose, you can see wheel bearings out. Spindle, we're going to take the tie rod off. Take that little castle nut, we're going to loosen that up. Pull the cotter pins out of here. If you can't get them out, not a big deal. Just put a wrench on them. Give it a twist and uh, they'll, they'll get cut off with these castle nuts. That's one nice thing about castle nuts. You're not going to reuse, be reusing it anyway because of them coming out. And then there's the top one up here. Let's see. Pop that ABS wire out of the way. Give us a little room. Magic. Must be getting rusty. I can usually do that in three. Yes, you can use a hammer. That way you don't have to wreck these seals here, these rubber seals. And you can get them. You can go to the store, uh, parts store, and buy them. Cost you a couple bucks from the help rack or something like that. But why well, do it if they ain't broken? So hammer on the flat spot right there, bang, bang, and it comes off. We'll do the same thing when we get these other ones off. Using a 22 wrench up here on top. Oh, I guess you guys can't see about that. There we go. A little better. Hmm. That whole thing is turning. I ain't supposed to do that. Hmm. Well, back to plan B. Hold on. Right now, this, uh, you know, when, you, when these nuts are tight, it pulls everything together. And when it's all pulled together, it stays tight. You don't have to hold anything. They're tapered. They're stuck together. 
Apparently when I went to loosen this nut, the nut only loosened up a pinch and actually the, the taper broke loose. So now I'm going to do have to tighten it to loosen it. Some of this stuff is just that much easier with impact. All the new electric ones are pretty handy. A lot of them, some of them are even pretty powerful, but still pretty hard to beat air ones. As you, can, as you can see, it's sticking out the bot, the ball joint. The stud is sticking out the bottom. Here, I'm going to put this bottom castle nut back on. Just because now I'm going to hit this with a BFH and uh, knock the spindle loose. I don't want it falling down, hitting my fingers or foot or bouncing off of tools and parts and send them flying. So. A little forethought helps a lot better than afterthought. Alright, you can see here. Put the nut back on. Just a couple of turns, a couple of threads. See that flat spot right there? That looks like a good place to hit it. Bang, bang, bang. See it pop loose there? Put that nut on the bottom that held that up. That way it didn't hit the floor. Which is a good thing, it might have ripped my ABS wires out too. So, like I said, a little forethought helps a lot on the afterthought. If you grease everything like I do, everything is covered in grease. Make sure you got some rags handy. <laughs> 